Good morning and welcome to Truth Youth Jam Session here at Brentwood Baptist Church. My name is Charlie Gordon and I am so excited to have you join us. Quickly invite a friend or family member to connect with us for an infusion of hope during our uplifting and inspirational worship service just for youth grades 6 through 12. After this service, we invite you to stay connected with us through our ministry, with our youth ministry, on all our social media platforms. You can follow us on Instagram at Brentwood Youth or Facebook at Brentwood Truth Ministry or on Twitter at Brentwood Youth One. For text alerts, simply go to Brentwood.org. Scroll down to quick links, click on the subscribe to text alerts and complete your information and you're ready to receive Brentwood's latest news announcements and events. Good morning. My name is Shashella James. I'm the director of the Act Teens Youth Ministry here at Brentwood Baptist Church. This morning I'll be reading to you Mark chapter 4 verses 3 through 9 from the New International Version. Listen, a farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched, and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants, so that they did not bear grain. Still, other seed fell on the good soil. It came up, grew, and produced a crop, some multiplying 30, some 60, some 100 times. Then Jesus said, Whoever has ears to hear, let them hear. Hello, my name is Kathleen Bryant. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, I first want to just say thank you, God. Thank you for allowing each of us to see this day. God, I just thank you for another opportunity, God, to come to your house and have jam service, God. We thank you for this Jesus and me moment. God, I just praise you. I pray right now for our leader, Reverend Mary Frazier, God. Continue to be with her, God. Continue to give her guidance, God. Give her direction. Continue to give her visions, God. I pray, God, that you give her the peace, the comfort, whatever she stand in need of, God. I pray right now for our youth all over this land, God, not only here at Brentwood, God, but we're living in times, God, where Youth are going through so, so much. It's peer pressure, there's bullying, God. There's taking tests, God. There are, going, there are things going on in the house, God, that might not be of you, God. They're under just different pressures and situations, God, that I didn't have to go through when I was their age. So I pray right now in the name of Jesus, God, that they will come to know you for themselves, first of all, God that they all know, God, that they could come to you, God. And Lord, let them know, God, as leaders here at Brentwood, God, that they have someone here, even here, God, that would listen to them. I just thank you and I praise you, God. I ask you that you continue to bless this ministry, bless every leader, bless every youth, God, and help us, God, to continue to give you the glory, God, because you are worthy of all the glory. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I ask it all in your son, Jesus Christ's name, amen. Good morning, my name is Dr. Nefertiti Washington and this is this month's announcements. Check out Middle School Jam and High School Real Talk every third Sunday via Zoom. Join us and invite friends to our Limitless Bible Study every Wednesday at 8 p.m. via Zoom. Check out our jam services like today, every fourth Sunday on YouTube. Make sure to pay your tithes and offerings. And if your birthday was in the month of October, put the date and your name 
and group me. Thank you. Good morning, Jam. I am so excited to be with you this morning. Can you believe they asked me to do a Jesus and me moment? Ha! Anyway, for you this morning, I will be reading a poem. The poem is Planting a Seed by Deborah Ann. I planted a seed not so long ago. I prayed and prayed for it to grow. I fed it the good news so it would flourish. I encouraged it daily to keep it nourished. I tended over it with love and grace in hopes that faith it would embrace. I urged it every day to take a firm root. I asked God to help it to mature and fruit. I planted a seed, prayed it would grow, and now my Savior it has come to know. Sow to yourselves in righteousness, reap in mercy, break up your fallow ground, for it is time to seek the Lord till he come and rain righteousness upon you. Hosea 10 verse 12. about to play an exciting game of Biblical Pictionary. Today we have the black team and the red team, youth leaders, competing for Pictionary champions. <clears throat> we have four rounds. Each team member will come, one will draw, one will guess, and then they will switch. And then the alternating team will do the same thing. The team that wins the most correct biblical references and draw them correctly will win the game. Let's get started. Introducing the black team, Shashella James and Kathleen Bryant. All right, let's go, let's go. Is it a person? Yeah, but, well, yes. People? And, yes, and, and a thing. All right. Angels? Yes. <laughs> okay, it's a thing. Laying in the bed. Mm -hmm. Bird bath. No. Um. Pass, pass, pass. <laughs> it was wine. No. Oh, oh. It was supposed to be wine. Oh my goodness. I don't even know how to draw this. Is it a person, place, or thing? <laughs> I guess it would be a thing. A thing. Okay. Oh my goodness. Um, I don't know. You run out of time. Okay, here. Yeah, pass on that also. I, 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 I. Oh, no. Five, four, three, two, and take one. A, she has to get the paper open. I have to get the paper open. 
I have some hard ones, y'all, for somebody who can't draw. Wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> I need some paper. I'm sorry. Let me see. <laughs> for, some, for somebody who cannot draw. <laughs> Next time, we need the option. <laughs> oh. Is she still... Oh, <laughs> I'm so glad. <laughs> I am so glad. <laughs> okay. But we got one. Yay! Yeah. Okay, give me your marker. <laughs> we got one. Uh, okay, so that was an entertaining two rounds of Biblical Pictionary. Now we're going to have the final two rounds with the red team, Nefertiti Washington and Lisa Turner. Woo. Here you go, ladies. You only need to beat one. So don't care. Give him a hug. Give him a hug. Flower. Um. Atmosphere. Sun. Good job. The sun. No, you had angel. This is the person. Person. Adam. Mm. Oh, the burning bush. Okay. Burning bush. Burning bush. Burning bush. Okay. Okay. Here goes the fourth round. First place thing. Um, animal. Cow. Chicken. Lamb. Goat. You should do a crown. That's what I want.
to go into two rounds of biblical trivia questions to see who wears the crown of Do You Know the Bible? Okay, so round one, give me Shinshella and Nefertiti. Woo! Okay, ladies, are you ready? Yes. Okay. Do you know the Bible? We go free, right? Do you know the Bible? <laughs> so, question number one. Who built the first city? Cain is the answer. Okay. <laughs> Question number two. What did God provide Abraham to offer as a burnt offering instead of his son's Isaac? A ram. Correct. <clears throat> Question number three. How many of each animal did Noah take on the ark? Nefertiti? Two. Okay. Ready? Next question. This is the reason Jacob sent his sons back to Egypt. Jacob sent his sons back to Egypt to get food. Good job. Woo! the book of Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy? The person who wrote all of those books of the Bible is, <laughs> I'm going to go with Moses. Woo! Good job. Okay, here we go. Come on, Team Red. This one's on you guys. Let's go. That whole question got me going. <laughs> what is the name of the place Lot and his wife fled from. Sodom and Gomorrah. Good job. Whoa. Good job. Okay. About to you. <laughs> <laughs> what are the names of Noah's three sons? Sam, Ham, and Japheth. Good job. Sham, Ham, and Japheth. Good job. Good job. <clears throat> what garden? The Garden of Eden. So Adam and Eve could return. Angels. Good job. All right. While at the palace, who got Joseph in trouble so that he got put in jail? Oh. Potiphar's wife. Yes. Whoa. Good job. <laughs> okay. What mountain did Moses receive the Ten Commandments? Masana? Yes. Wait, wait for it, wait for it. Black, come on, come on! Come on, come on! <laughs> okay. That's how she did me, right? Here, here we go, black team. I know you can do it. You can do it, Black. You what did God promise Abram? Many sons. Good job. Okay. 
Good job. Eve. Eve was made from this part of Adam. The rib. Yes. Wait till she finished the question. How did Joseph's brother get rid of him? The reason why I decided to be a leader with the youth ministry is I had visited the jam sessions and was blown away by the dynamic youth that I'd seen participating. I was blown away because as a youth, I didn't see that growing up. And it just inspired me to want to get involved so that I can continue the tradition here at Brentwood. I work with the youth because just like everybody else, at one point in time, I was a youth myself. Um, I came up through Brentwood's youth ministry at that, um, and there were a lot of things that I gained um, from the ministry as a youth, um, and so I think that it's important for the youth of today um, to have someone there around them and in front of them um, as an example. Um, you know, someone who has gone through not necessarily the same things as them, um, but someone who has been in the same position as them at one point, um, being in the youth ministry. Um, and I just think that it's important for the youth to have someone there that may not necessarily be their exact age, but is very close to their age, um, as there are a lot of things that you know, I'm currently dealing with that they might be dealing with or things that they have gone through that I've gone through also. Um, so yeah, just, I guess, um, I think it's important to be a beacon of light that's a little bit closer um, to them, so. Good morning. My name is Reverend Lisa Turner. And the reason why I work and volunteer with the youth, I remember as a youth myself, 
Um, in many of the settings, uh, youth was, uh, was seen and not heard. And I wanted to be, work with the youth to give them a voice, to let them know that there was someone who was listening, someone who cared about them. And to do that, I can bring forth the Word of God, talk to them about the Word, talk to them about forgiveness, about love, God unconditional agape love, and just be able to share with them and have some uh, place for them to come and feel comfortable to be able to talk and just to be able to give wise counsel. And so it's just so important for the youth to know that they have a, a stake in this world too, that it's not just about the adults making the way, but also that they have a path of their own and that God has created all of us with purpose and so that we should have an opportunity to know what that purpose is. And so we get to be a guiding light to help them to find their purpose. While I work with the youth, um, being honest, um, the main reason I work with the youth is when I was a youth, I had some very influential people um, who just kind of, they saw me, they got me. Uh, it was a really, really rough time in my life. It was a time when um, life just didn't make sense. And so um, between parents and school, it was not the nicest of places to be. And I was in those not of nicest of places to be. Um, but those few people um, in church, they reached out to me constantly. They constantly kept me um, grounded. They listened and they, they actually heard me, not just what I was saying, but they actually heard me. And so I wanted to be that person for anyone coming after me. And so um, I just wanted to make sure that if there was anyone like me, that no matter what place it was, whether it was the, the bottomless pit or if they were on a super high, that they always knew that there are people out there who love them and those people were showing the love that they got from God and they also were directing them to God and I also wanted to direct our youth to God. Um, he's the reason I'm here. He's the reason I'm still here because I'm still here and they can be the same. They can still be here and, 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 and flourish in his love. I volunteer with the youth ministry at, Brent, at Brentwood Baptist Church for two very simple reasons. I grew up in the church and I want to pour back into the ministries that poured so much into me. I was in acting over 40 years ago and sold those seeds. Now I have two children here at the church, two teenagers in the youth ministry as well. I love that they can take advantage of the ministry and it's my part to make sure I pour into them and other youth what was given to me. One of the reasons why I have worked with youth over the years is, like Shoshella, I've been at Brentwood since the second grade. And as a child growing up, there were youth leaders before me that led me. But one of the things I do believe it was a calling from God to be a youth leader. We're living in times, I feel, where youth need to hear a voice. They need to know that there's somebody here for them. When I was younger, there were times where I, you shouldn't been, you, you didn't, your voice was really maybe not that important. But I want the youth to know that they are important. We've been talking about sowing seeds, so my desire as a youth leader is to sow compassion in youth, to show them love, to show them empowerment, to let them know that they are somebody and they do have somebody that they could come to and talk to and they can know that they can trust this person with information because again, with so much pressure and peer pressure and negative things going on in their life, they might not have anybody that they can talk to or go to. So as a youth leader, I just want them to know that I'm here for them, but I want them to know that God is with them most of all. And spiritually growth as they grow spiritually that they'll get a closer walk with God. The reason that I work with the youth um, is because they are the future. They are the next generation to be worship leaders and and 
just leaders of Christ and everything like that. So I want to help them be able to like mold them into the people that they desire to be and also to fellowship with people and just have fun and know that church is a safe place for for youth and for you to develop and be a be just like Christ. Hi, so my name is Chevelle Kent and I work with the youth simply because somebody works with me. Um, I've grown up in this church, most people don't know because I didn't do a lot in the church. I did one activity here, one activity there but I always came to church and I always came to Sunday school. And some of the same people that I work with in youth now were my youth leaders back then. And another thing about this ministry is as you see kids grow, you grow. So when I first started this ministry, I just wanted to be behind the scenes. Look how well that worked out. Um, just sending emails. And now <laughs> I host things. I give small speeches of why I'm here and I love it. And I, and I thank you not only youth leaders for having me and still nurturing me as I grow in as an adult. But I also thank you youth because believe it or not, you teach us more things every day. And as I'm getting older, I'm, I hate to say this, but as I'm getting older, because God blessed me to, to keep living, I've learned more from you and learned more by preparing things for you and, and making things fun and interesting than I did as a youth myself. So. I do this for you guys, but I also thank you for pouring into me. Thank you. Why I work with youth ministry. Wow. That's a really good question, but the truth is, I wouldn't have it any other way. Uh, I've known since I was a senior in high school that God wanted me to work with youth. Um, I tried really hard to run away from it. <laughs> And each time I moved away from it, I got called back into working with youth. I just have a passion for empowering young people. I truly believe that they are a, tr a gift that God has placed here. And so many of our young people fa face um, issues. I think Miss Kathleen alluded to that earlier. Don't know how the order will appear. but. They're all going through trials and tribulations. And very often the adults in their worlds do not understand. I do not take the time to pour into them and to listen to them and to understand. But I know that they are one of God's most precious gifts to this earth. And it's so exciting to watch them grow and mature and develop. It's amazing how they come into youth ministry sometimes with these attitudes oh my god attitudes and you're like okay god are you sure and by 12th grade you can see how god has groomed them and matured them and they leave and it's so important to me that they leave home with a seed that has been planted that they know who jesus is and that he loves them unconditionally and that there's nothing nothing that they can do or ever do that would take his love from them. And so that is my goal and that's my passion for young people everywhere to know that Jesus loved them, that God loves them and that God loved them so much that he sent his only son to die for them and that wherever they go in life, they will find Jesus there and he will always be with them. That's my passion for young people. Hey, good to see you. It is by God's grace that we're able to see each other, even though we aren't in each other's physical presence. I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. I extend to you now the invitation to let Jesus Christ into your life. We are in tough times worldwide, and we can't make it without Jesus. So right where you are, I want you to think about something. If you had died yesterday, where would your soul be today? Where would your soul be today if you had died yesterday? If you can't say definitely with a surety that it would be with God the Father in heaven, then you need to really think about giving your life to Jesus Christ. He'll make a difference in your life. He will make it possible 
for you to do whatever you need to do. We won't have to fear the pandemic. We don't have to fear these tough times. We don't have to fear anything knowing that Jesus is Lord of our lives and we have eternal life with God our Father in heaven. We have access to the Holy Spirit to help us, to give us hope in a future that seems dismal, in a future that doesn't seem like it's going to be bright. But with Jesus Christ into your life, we can make it. So today, think about it. You see where that you can join the Printwood Church there. We're here, Reverend Frazier, the youth group, the youth all over the church are here. I'm here, Reverend Thompson and all of the Brentwood parents and workers, we love you, we believe in you. If there's anything that you need, you can let one of us know. But today, don't leave Jesus out of your life. Let him make the difference. He loves you. He wants you to be part of his family. And with all that being said, and Jesus in your life, I've got a feeling, young folk, I have a definite feeling that everything is going to be all right. Will you accept him? Just say, Jesus, come into my life. I can't make it without you. Jesus, I need you. Jesus, I love you. Jesus, take over my life and make the difference for me. If you've said that prayer and prayed that prayer, get in touch with the Brentwood Church. Become part of the Brentwood family and jam and our youth church with Reverend Frazier as our leader and Pastor Ratliff as our shepherd. We would love to have you and Jesus would love to be your leader and Lord of your life. Think about it now. If you died yesterday, where would your soul be today? Accept Jesus Christ in your life and you'll be able to answer that question both now and forevermore. May God bless you and keep you is my